Kia ora. In these first few videos, we're working through some preliminary material we're going to need in our study of abstract algebra. And today we're going to touch on a method of proof which is extremely useful called mathematical induction. So the, way, the best way to maybe visualize how induction works is to think of a row of dominoes. Now we know in advance that if, I, if we were to knock over one domino, then that would knock over the one following it. It's something we can sort of see by maybe looking at the picture. So before we can knock our dominoes over though, we do need to knock over the first one. And then that will knock over its neighbor, which will knock over its neighbor, etc. And all of the dominoes should then fall over, at least beyond the one we knocked over first. So how does that work in terms of mathematics? Well, the kind of question that we might want to prove by induction is something like the following. So we could show, for example, for all natural numbers that n cubed plus n plus one cubed plus n plus two cubed is a multiple of nine. Okay, so let's just set that up as a statement about n. So what we'd say is, we'll define our statement s of n to be n cubed plus n plus one cubed plus n plus two cubed is a multiple of nine. So at the moment, we can't really tell by looking at it whether that's true or false, but presumably it is. Um, so S of n can really have three, three different states to it. So on the one hand, um, it could be either true. So let's maybe to indicate true, we could color it in blue. Or that, that might be might false. Be false. And we'll go with orange for false. Or it might just be kind of the default state, which is we don't actually know. Okay, so maybe what, what you might visualize at this point in time is that you have a whole lot of these circles. These are representing S of 1, S of 2, S of 3, S of 4, etc. So this would this would be S of 1. S of 8. So at the moment, we, we don't really know if any of these are true, are true or not. So we're just going to represent them by those open circles. Now, the idea behind induction is that we prove two things. We, we show, first off, that if S of K is true, that it follows that S of K plus 1 is true. So that means if I color in square uh, circle K, then that means I'll also be able to color in circle k plus 1. So this first part, assuming s of k is true, that's called our induction hypothesis. And we'll see how this works for this problem in a second. And we'll assume that's true and use that to show that s of k plus 1 must also be true. And the other thing that we need is we'll show, for example, that s of 1 is true. So you can see that if I, if I have those two facts, if I know that my first circle is colored in, and that it's always true that if S of K is true, if one circle is colored in, then its neighbor gets colored in, this is gonna let me color in all of those circles onwards from here, and that, will, that should mean it's true for all of our integers. Right, so let's see how we might go about doing that for our example problem here. Let's start with the induction hypothesis part. So what we'll do is we will assume S of K is true for some K, i.e. that means that K cubed plus K plus 1 cubed plus K plus 2 cubed is equal to 9 times something for some S. Okay, we're trying to show it's a multiple of 9, so therefore it's going to be equal to 9s for, for some s. So that's our induction hypothesis. We're supposing this to be true. And then we're going to look at s of k plus 1. So for s, for s of k plus 1, I basically take my expression here, and I'm going to, instead of putting an n, I'm going to put in k plus 1. And that will give me k plus 1 cubed plus k plus 2 cubed is basically plus 1 on all the things we had before, plus k plus 3 cubed. And I'm trying to establish whether or not this is a multiple of 9. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to somehow make use of my induction hypothesis here. I'm going to try and make use of the fact 
that if I can get that expression involved somehow, it will be equal to 9s. Okay, now I can see that I can get my previous expression by inserting a k cubed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add on a k cubed here, and then to make it correct, I'll also take it off at the end again. It's that common mathematical trick of adding and um, subtracting the same, the same thing uh, to, to leave it unchanged. So if I do that, then this first part here, that is exactly what I had before. So that's going to be my 9s. So if I write this out in a couple of steps, that's going to be equal to k cubed plus k plus 1 cubed plus k plus 2 cubed plus k plus 3 cubed minus k cubed. Okay, so what I can do now is I can take that first blue block and I can replace it with the 9s because I've assumed this is true here. So I can just replace that expression with just my 9s. So that equals 9s plus, now let's expand these out. So k cubed is going to give me a k cubed. It's going to give me a plus 3k squared times 3 plus 9k squared. You can check these for yourself if you like. Plus 3 squared k times 3 is going to be plus 27 k plus 3 cubed which is 27 minus k cubed and these two terms are going to cancel out and so everything here is now a nice multiple of 9 so that equals 9 times s plus k squared plus 3k plus 3 Okay, so I've shown that if s of k is true, i.e. if this statement here is true, then it's also true for k plus 1. Okay, so I've done this part of the process. But I don't even know if, if it's true for any k at this point in time, so I can't, doesn't actually yet let me answer anything at all about my overall problem. To actually start the dominoes falling over, I need to show it's true for s of 1. So let's take a look at s, s of 1. So s of 1, well, I'm just going to plug 1 in for n, so it's going to be 1 cubed. And my question is, is this a multiple of 9? Plus 1 plus 1 cubed, plus 1 plus 2 cubed, which is equal to 1, plus 2 cubed, which is 8, plus 3 cubed, which is 27, which is equal to 36, which is equal to 9, times 4. So that is also a multiple of 9. So now I know that s of 1 is true, so I can color this one in. And I also established that if s of 1 is true, then s of 2 is true using my induction step. And therefore s of 3 is true, and s of 4 is true, and all the dominoes fall over. And therefore this statement is true for all n. <laughs> Now what we've just done here is actually known as using the first principle of mathematical induction. There's actually a second variant that we'll talk about in a second, but we'll just state this a little bit more, more carefully first, because um, I've been a little bit wishy-washy over some of these steps, so let's just make it a bit more concrete. So the first principle of mathematical induction is says, let s of n be a statement about natural numbers, these are n and the natural numbers, and suppose s of n naught is true for some natural number n naught and n. We used 1 before for our n naught. If for all integers k with k greater than or equal to naught, so we're looking everything beyond n naught, that s of k is true implies that s of k plus 1 is true. Okay, so essentially we've, there's a slight extra condition on the s of k implies s of k plus 1. So we just sort of did that. But strictly speaking, you only have to show this is true for k greater than or equal to whatever your base case is. So for us it was for k greater than or equal to 1. Didn't really matter for the last question, so we didn't bother stating that. If that's the case, um, then s of n is true for all n 
greater than or equal to n naught. So that's just what we've done with the previous problem. So the general the general thing that happens for all these problems is you're going to assume s of k is true, and you're going to make use of that um, assumption somehow in showing that s of k plus one is true. You'll then establish that it's true for your base case. That's your s of n naught is true, and that that completes your result. Now there is a second form of mathematical induction that we sometimes use. So the second principle of mathematical induction, which in fact is equivalent to the first one, um, you can derive one from the other, um, it's just arranged a little bit differently. So again, it says that s of n be a statement about natural numbers, and suppose s of n naught is true. Okay, so this is what we're imagining this time. So if this is n naught, let's just start just for variation, not at one. Suppose this is true, and then if for all integers k greater than or equal to n naught, if it's true, uh, the s of n naught is of n naught plus one up to s of k. Okay, so what we're going to do, what we need to show for our induction step, is that if all these are true, so maybe we'll call this one k here. That, if that's true, then that implies that s of k plus one is also true. Okay, so this time instead of just being for our previous example, all we had was s of k being true implies that s of k plus 1 is true. This time it's s of n naught up to k being true implies that k plus 1 is true. And again, if, it, if that's the case and you've also got that your base case is true, then once again that will be true for all integers greater than or equal to our starting value. So it's a bit weird. Um, it's probably easier to understand if we put it into context in an example. So let's have a look at look at an example to finish off with. So our example is going to be to show that every natural number is either prime or a product of primes. So this is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, except we're not going to prove the part about the decomp decomposition into primes being unique. We're just going to show that every number is either prime or a product of primes. Okay, so basically we'll say let A be the set of integers Oh, it's just called net of natural numbers um, greater than one. So we'll exclude one because one is not a prime. That are either primes or products of primes or composite. Okay, so this time we'll do our base case first. So clearly, if we just look at two. 2 is a prime number, so therefore 2 is a member of our set of numbers that are either primes or competent or composite. Sorry. So uh, that means our base case is going to be n naught is equal to 2. Now we need to do our induction hypothesis. So this time it's got, we're going to assume that for all numbers between 2 and k, natural numbers it will be, can be expressed as primes or are primes or products of primes. It shouldn't be for all. Let's assume all number, natural numbers between 2 and k are primes or products of primes. And now we'll look at k plus 1. All right, so we're assuming that every number between 2 and k can be expressed as a prime or as a product of primes, and we're going to argue that k plus 1 also can be. Okay, so two possibilities for k plus 1. So first off, it could be a prime number. So if k plus 1 is prime, then k plus 1 is a member of our set. Okay, remember the set is just the set of all numbers that are primes or products of primes. If k plus 1 is not prime, then, well, if it's not prime, then it must be composite. It must be a product of numbers then it is composite, which means k plus 1 is equal to a, b, where a and b have to be less than or equal to k. But we know something about a and b. a and b are in a by our hypothesis, because we assumed they were. Hence k plus 1 is a product of primes. Because if a is a product of primes or a prime, 
and b is a product of primes or a prime, multiply those together, we're still going to have a product of primes. Okay, and therefore that's, and, and we're done. So we've shown that if all numbers between two and k are primes or products of primes, it follows that k plus one is a product of primes. So that's proving our induction step. Um, in our base case, we already established here. Therefore, it follows all n greater than two for that n is prime or a product of primes. So for this example, we had to use the second principle of mathematical induction, because if we tried to use the first one, which just relies on k instead of that whole set of numbers up to between 2 and k, then we'd sort of be end up with a situation where we're trying to show that, for example, 87 is a prime or a product of primes based on the fact that 86 is, which doesn't really get you anywhere. So we needed to have that statement about everything before that point. So we basically that's what we, what we relied on when we when we um, use this information here, that no matter what product, no matter what A and B were, no matter how they form that K plus one, they have to be part of our set. And therefore, by our assumption, we got the result about the product of primes. Okay, so one final little thing to note. Um, there is a principle that is results from this and it's called the well ordering principle i don't really want to go into details right now but i'm going to state it here really quickly um, because we'll use some applications of this shortly this just says that every non-empty set of positive integers mm -hmm. contains a smallest member it seems like an obvious statement um, that every non-empty set of positive numbers has to have a smallest one but it actually you can show that it's um, it follows directly from this principle of mathematical induction now we're not going to worry too much about why that is because it's a little bit beyond the scope of this course but we'll come up with a use for this in our next video so probably enough for now we'll see you next time